a guess on what formula that is? A, B, C, or B? All right, if you said B, then that is correct. That is our slope formula. If you pick something else, we can make that adjustment. This is slope formula. Then we have for real numbers A, B, and C. If A equals B, then A plus B equals B plus C. So that's one of the ones that we haven't talked about, at least in this class. Anyone have a guess? All right, so the correct answer for this one is actually A. So if that's what you said, I, I can see it. But it's the addition property of equality. The one down here, two triangles are congruent if and only if their corresponding parts are congruent. All right, so which one does that best match? Corresponding parts. All right, really the only possibility for that one is C because we have discussed those other three. So it's not angle, angle side, angle side, angle, right? Corresponding parts of the one that is Next one, at the top, we have this formula. What does it represent? It is the midpoint formula, good. The next one, we have real numbers A and B. If A is equal to B, then A can replace B in any expression and vice versa. Right, that one I'll give you because we haven't talked about that one. That's the substitution property of the problem. So if A equals to B, then I can replace A and B with each other in any time. On the bottom, if two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of another triangle, the triangles are congruent. So that's two angles and then the included side. Or I think I said that backwards. Two angles and the included side. Which one would that be? The VB, right? Two angles and the included side. So included meaning that it's in between them. All right. Then we have at the top, I will be very sad if you don't know this one, what's this one? Distance formula, good, the one we spent a long time on yesterday. The distance formula. Um, this one you might not know, but for real numbers, A, B, and C, if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. All right, that one is the chance of the property. We haven't talked about that one really. And then the bottom, if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So two sides and the included angle. That would best represent which postulate? All right, the only one that says two sides is the last one. All right, two sides is included angle, so that has to be side angle side. All right, good on that. Now we have triangle sum theorem. 
We have the sum of the measures of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. All right, so the, what it says is important. That's known as the triangle sum theorem. All the angles of any triangle internally, at least, will equal 180 degrees. All right, next we have triangle inequality theorem review. So this presentation is a lot about this theorem. Just bear with me, a lot of highlighting. But this one says that the sum of the sides of the triangle is always larger than the length of the third side. So it doesn't matter what two sides you pick, if you add any two sides, it'll always be longer than the third side. And that shows here's an example that it can be any two of the sides. All right, there's two ways to classify triangles. That's on the next page. It's either by their side. So we have equilateral, where they're equidistant around all sides, isosceles, where only two are the same, and then scaling, where none of them are the same. You can also classify them by angles. So acute, equal, equiangular, obtuse, and right triangle. Right? It's a bit of a review, but just remember there's two ways to classify them. If we look more closely at the isosceles triangle, there's a special theorem with that because if two sides of the triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. So here's an example down here. We have two sides that are congruent that makes it isosceles. Well, it's a rule that the two angles across will also be. Right. Now we have mid segments of a triangle theorem. That one says a mid segment, and I'll highlight it for you. So this would be a mid segment. A mid segment is a segment where both endpoints lie at the midpoint the two opposite sides of a figure. So this mid segment splits it into two equal halves. I mean, at least this way and this way, if that makes sense. So the mid segment splits in the middle because we know, ooh, that's in the middle, sorry. Because we know that's in the middle, we can say that side JU is equivalent to side JR. Let me see if there's anything else important in here. It says the mid segment of a triangle has the same properties. There is only one side of the triangle to which it is parallel to. So it obviously won't be parallel to the top portion, it'll be parallel to the bottom. And one more thing about that that is important. The segment, the mid segment is parallel to the third side. So this is my third side. And its length is equal to half the length of the third side. So the length of this right here, the mid segment, is equal to half the length of third side, which over here we labeled. Right? That's an important piece of information. You'll need that piece of information later. Any questions? All right, so next we have 
the centers of a triangle. And I'm going to be really honest with you. This confuses me. So I'm just going to kind of point them out to you. If they're on a quiz or something, I'll let you know and I'll figure out more about it. But I really don't, I've never heard of these before and I'm not sure what they're important for. Maybe I'll find out later. But I'll just kind of introduce them to you. We have four different centers of a triangle and they have pictures to illustrate each center. We have a centroid. So medians are drawn from the midpoint to each side. Centroid will always be inside the triangle. Again, I don't know if this will be important in this class, but we'll find out. Kind of give the definition. Then we have ortho center. So here's how to draw them. It represents the point of intersection between three altitudes. It can be inside, outside, or on the triangle. All right, then we have in center. Here's how to draw them, an example. It represents the point of intersection between three angle bisectors. And the in center will always lie inside the triangle. All right, ortho center. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Circumcenter is the next one. So, perpendicular bisectors, I think that part can turn it because then you'll know circumcenters make perpendicular angles. It represents intersection between three perpendicular bisectors, and that can appear inside, outside, or on the side. All right, so mostly important was the other stuff other than the triangle center. I'm not sure if the triangle centers are important, but the other stuff definitely is. So just like how we did in the 3.01, the 3.02, instead of using like a Google form or separate worksheet, you're gonna do the last slide in your notes and turn it in. All right, so answer all those four questions. If you get stuck, let me know you're answering every part. Um, and also the timer for 15 minutes on that. So it's a 3.02 last page of your notes that you're turning in. I mean, you're turning in the whole packet, but that's the one you're working on. Questions? All right. 